Okay, this is your 10.2 homework help video. A reminder that the homework help videos are not designed to replace the notes videos, so if you have not watched the notes videos, you need to go ahead and pause this one, go over and watch the notes videos. Um, this video is not explaining thoroughly what the, the steps are and what the thought process is. It is just uh, to provide a little bit of aid for those who maybe got a little stumped, just kind of want to hear one more quick explanation about the one step that they're still struggling with. Um, or for those who would like to just check a couple of their answers ahead of time and see if they're they're getting them right. Um, so in this video, we're going to be doing numbers 1, 7, 11, and 19. Okay? So number 1 is up first. 1 and 7, we, but for both of those, we're converting the rectangular equation to polar form. Um, so for these, we're taking our x's and y's, turning them into r's and thetas. For the most part, we therefore are going to be using the middle two relationships that were on the top of your first notes page for 10.2. Um, that x is the same thing as r cosine theta and y is the same thing as r sine theta. In the notes video, we wrote down three kind of broad steps, and I know they're, they're very broad. Um, it's, it's because each equation is going to have its kind of own little nuance to it. Um, but for the most part, these steps are, are kind of a guiding force for, as you, for you as you go. So step one is to substitute. We have x, cos, x equaling r cosine theta, y equaling r sine theta. So we're going to go ahead and plug both of those in. Um, for x, again, we have our r cosine theta. Our y is r sine theta. Or, for those who would prefer, there is another one, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. You could immediately, at this point where it says x squared plus y squared, you could immediately plug r squared in and that is fine. Uh, but as I mentioned in the notes video, do make sure you're careful with that. It does have to be x squared plus y squared. Exactly. It cannot be x plus y equaling r, right? It's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Um, so if you wanted to jump right to that step, you could. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, like I did in the notes video, plug in my r cosine and my r sine and solve from there. Okay? Step two was to rewrite, and so that a lot of times means some sort of simplification, potentially a factor if you have multiple terms, um, maybe a Pythagorean identity of some sort. In this particular case, we're going to simplify by squaring these. Okay? We know what r squared or r cosine theta all squared is, that is r squared cosine theta squared, or cosine squared theta, and then r squared sine squared theta. And because we have two terms with a common value here, that r squared, we can GCF factor here, greatest common factor, pull out the r squared. Um, and so if I pulled that r squared out, I'd be left with cosine squared theta for the first term and sine squared theta for the second term, which is a Pythagorean identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1, which brings us to our last step, which is we're going to solve for r squared, r, or theta, which is ever is applicable. In this case, it's going to be r squared. A reminder that we generally only solve for theta if there is no r to solve for. Okay, in this case, we do have an r to solve for. We have an r squared, which simply means uh, multiply. r squared, therefore, is going to equal 25. Okay. Okay, number seven. So number seven, again, first step, we're going to go ahead and substitute. We've got an, an x that we can substitute in for, r cosine theta, and a y, r sine theta. And then we want to go ahead and rewrite this, um, combining like terms, simplifying, factoring, Pythagorean identity. In this case, really the only rewrite I see initially is adding the 12 over, maybe dropping the parentheses. And what do you know, as soon as we add that 12 over, look what we've got with our two terms left on the left. Okay, they have a GCF, an R in common, so I can go ahead and pull that R out. I'm left with 3 cosine theta for my first term, 4 sine theta for my second term. 
And now I'm on to my last step, which is to solve for r squared r or theta, whichever one's applicable. In this case, that would be r. And so how do I get r by itself? I'm going to divide all this over under the 12. And so this would be 12 over 3 cosine theta plus 4 sine theta. Okay, and then the last two we are going to do are going to be numbers 11 and 19, which have the following instructions. A, convert the polar equation to rectangular form. <coughs> Excuse me. And B, sketch the graph for the polar equation. Okay, so number 11. First up, we're going to go ahead and convert this to our rectangular form. We have r equals 4 cosine theta. On that second page, we wrote actually two different sets of notes or steps down. Um, the first set of steps went for when it, there was no r, just theta, um, and what that would look like. And you have one of those on your homework as well. I, I don't know, say it's number 13 or, or maybe 11. No, we're doing number 11, so it must be number 13. Um, but then we wrote down a second set of steps, and those are the ones that we use for pretty much all the others, and so those are the ones I'm going to be referencing for this problem as well as number 19. Okay, so first step, we want to rewrite and replace the trig, okay? Um, so we're looking as a reminder for cosine theta or sine theta. If we see those already, then we can replace immediately. Cosine is x over r, sine is y over r. If we don't see cosine or sine, we're looking to, and we see some other trig, we're looking to somehow manipulate those trigs into ones we can substitute in for. In this case, we've got a cosine already, so I'm going to go ahead and substitute. Cosine, as a reminder, is x over r. Okay? Step two, we then are going to manipulate to isolate r with the ultimate goal of getting to r squared. With r squared, we can then substitute x squared plus y squared in. Um, and so in this case, isolating the r, I notice I have an r on the left and the right, so let's go ahead and bring the one on the right over to the left. And so we have r times r, which is r squared, equals 4x on the other side. And now I can substitute in r squared. It's the same thing as x squared plus y squared. And then we can go ahead and do our step three, which is to solve for a form you can graph. In this case, this one is going to be a circle. We have two squared components without a leading coefficient or, or a matching leading coefficient, I should say. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and do complete the square. Let's subtract this 4x over to the other side. And we're looking for what is this number that's getting added in for complete the square. Well, remember it's half of this, so negative 2 squared, which is 4. Okay? So this factors here to x minus 2 squared equals 4. And I'm going to rewrite that 4 as root 4, or 2, squared because <coughs> now it's in our circle form. What's our hk? Graphing. Our hk is 2, 0. So that's my center. Right, 2, 0. And what's your radius? Our radius is 2, so we're going 2 in every direction. Okay, last but not least for homework help here, number 19. Go ahead and pause the video. If you haven't already tried number 19, give it a shot. <coughs> Again, number 19 is not notes. It is designed to help you check your work and help you get past your stuck point. Um, it is the most challenging one, so, so don't just watch through the video. Um, try it on your own. Okay? 
Um, number 19, I'm actually going to solve number 19 a little bit differently than I did in the notes video. In the notes video, I mentioned that there's a variety of ways through this. Um, I showed one way in the notes video, but right at that first step, I talked about a different way. In the notes video, I multiplied, I think it was one minus sine theta down here, if I remember correctly. I multiplied that over to begin with. In this particular one, um, I'm going to do what I, what I reference in the note video, which is rather than multiply as my first step, I'm going to immediately substitute in. That way those who maybe wanted to see it um, another way, they can, you, you can kind of hear how it would be walked through um, that way. For those who multiplied over like I did in the notes video, you should still get the same answer. If you don't get the same answer, snap a picture of it, send it my way, I'm more than happy to check it for you. Okay? Okay. So if rather than multiplying over, we immediately plugged in sine theta is y over r, then I'd still be looking to do my same initial first step, um, which is to substitute in. And then second step, manipulate to isolate r with the ultimate goal of getting r squared. Okay? And so it'd be at this point that you had two options. One, you can multiply this entire denominator over to the other side and distribute the r in. Kind of like the first step that you saw demonstrated in the notes video. Or two, you could multiply within this fraction every term by r. That would be clearing that denominator of your complex fractions. If you multiplied every term by r, you'd have 2r over r plus y. Okay? Both work. I myself typically go with the multiply the denominator over and distribute. Okay, and then distributing that r in, we have r times 1, which is r. r and the r in the denominator would cancel. And so this would be r plus y equals on this side, we'd have 2. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the y over. We have r equals negative y plus 2 um, to isolate the r. Okay? Again, not the only way through it. There are a variety of methods. If you picked a different way to isolate the r and didn't quite get to the right spot, um, take a picture, send it my way, I'll help you. Okay? Okay, so now we're here. Ultimate goal of getting r squared. Well, we could do that by squaring both sides. So we have r squared equals, and then squaring this, foiling it out, negative y times negative y would be y squared. Negative y times 2 is negative 2, so it would be negative 4y, and plus 4 at the back. Okay? And so now I can substitute in. This is x squared plus y squared equals y squared minus 4y plus 4. Okay, last step, solve for a form you can graph. These y squareds are going to cancel, so we're going to have x squared equals negative 4y plus 4. And so that's a parabola, 1 squared, the x squared. Um, and so we want to get this into parabola form, meaning we want this to be y equals, not negative 4y equals. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this first, negative 4y plus 4 equals x squared. Just flipping that equation, right? And I'm going to go ahead and factor that negative 4 out so I can get it to be y equals. And then dividing that negative 4 over, we have our parabola form. Okay? Okay, sketching our graph then. Last step here. First up, what's your hk? Okay, well my hk in this case would be 0, 1. And then as we talked about in the video, as we did a kind of a quick review of this, um, you can um, you could plug in points, do a little x, y, t chart if you prefer. You could do the idea of A being your stretch of your parabola, but remember that that only works, works for one extra point on either side of the vertex. Um, so whichever one you prefer. 
when I did this one, I myself plugged in 2 and negative 2 because I noticed that the 2 and negative 2 would end up canceling the denominator of my fraction because 2 squared is 4, right? We'd cancel with the 4 on the bottom. Adding the 1 over, you'd get y equals 0 for both negative 2 and 2. Um, again, nothing especially fancy about those points. They were just the ones that looked like they would be the easiest to plug in. Okay, so I've got my parabola. Getting downwards facing because it's a negative A. Okay, so that's your homework help. Again, not meant to replace the notes. It's meant to um, just kind of help you check your work a little bit ahead of time. If you haven't watched the notes video, I highly encourage you to do so. Maybe even do some extra practice. Okay, let us know if you have any questions.